Hello everyone. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Tuesday. Today I wanted to discuss handbags that I have sold and why. Uh, I asked you guys uh, a few weeks ago if this is something that you would want to watch and a lot of you responded by saying yes. It would be awesome to know, you know, the thought process as to why it is that I sold some of my handbags, especially because uh, there are a few that I have uh, done unboxings on and I don't showcase them anymore because of the same reason I ended up selling them. Now I know that some of the handbags that I'm about to discuss might be some of your guys' personal favorites and, uh, you know, while these handbags bags are beautiful and I did enjoy them when I did have them. At the end of the day, it all, it's all a matter of personal preference and whether or not that handbag ends up suiting your lifestyle. And, you know, styles always change. Your personal tastes always change from time to time. And I'm happy that I was able to put the money that I, that I, that I got from those handbags that I sold into handbags that I use more often or handbags that I enjoy a lot more. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a picture of each one. That way you guys know what bag it is that I'm talking about. I'm going to put a picture of each one, uh, put it up there for a few seconds and then I will go into uh, the details as to why I sold it. All right, so let's get started. The Tivoli GM has got to be one of the best looking handbags that Louis Vuitton has had in their collection, in my opinion. I think it's right up there with the artsy as far as how beautiful it is. However, the handbag did just did not end up working out for my collection. Uh, there are two reasons why I sold it. The first reason is because of the straps. Uh, because the straps are the dual rolled handles, uh, anytime I would put it on my shoulders, it would end up rolling right off. I don't know if it's maybe I don't have the shoulders for it. I have no idea. But I would sometimes try to interact twine them or put one on top of it uh, on top of the other to hold it in its place and sometimes it would work but it just wouldn't hold on long enough for me to be able to enjoy the handbag so I would put it on and it would constantly just start rolling off whether I was wearing a full-on shirt or whether I was wearing a tank top a jacket what have you it would constantly roll off so to me that was a major major uh, con uh, another thing that I found that the the Tivoli has is the way that you open and close the bag now whenever you do open up the bag because of of the uh, the top the zip closure I felt that you had to hold on to one side of the bag to be able to open up the zipper and what ends up happening is that over time uh, because you're holding it in that same spot you'll end up getting more wear you'll get more patina uh, and the vaquetta will end up wearing a little bit differently on that part that you're holding on to it so that you can open and close the bag so maybe if it had something that you can open and close it up with ease without having to touch that part of the vaquetta I think it would make it a little bit easier uh, but because of that and because of the wear that I found that it would end up getting on there uh, plus the, sh the shoulder straps was definitely a major major con for me uh, but it was a beautiful bag and if there's one thing that I appreciate the most about the Tivoli is its size and how much you can fit in there uh, because when you open up the bag it has this large wide opening that you can see everything at a glance and you can fit so many items in there it's just a beautiful handbag and I really wish it would have worked out for my collection but unfortunately it did not The Eva Clutch in the monogram and the Demi Ben prints. The monogram Eva Clutch I didn't have for too long, uh, and the Demi Ben one I had for quite some time, and it was actually one of the bags that I would use quite often when I would travel. And uh, I am five foot five, and I just really liked the way that it would lay. It was perfectly uh, on my hip, and uh, it was just a great bag to be able to carry, and it didn't take up too much space. But there is one detail on this, on specifically the Demi Ben that I loved in the beginning that I didn't appreciate in the end or the last couple of months that I had it. And that is the inventory plate. Uh, when I first unboxed it, I was crazy about it. I loved the fact that it was just this large plate that just added so much character character to the bag. And I remember that a lot of you guys um, on my unboxing or even when I would talk about it in my favorites or when I did reviews on it, a lot of you guys would say that, you know, I might not be so much of a fan of the inventory plate come six months or come a year or whatever it is. And uh, I have to say that you guys were right because what happens with the inventory plate is that even though it is beautiful and even though it does add a lot of character to the bag, as I stated earlier, what ends up happening is because it is such a large piece of hardware, it ends up scratching a lot easier. So what was once beautiful uh, started getting a lot of wear to it and it was something that I wasn't uh, too crazy about using, you know, and I felt that it really took a 
away from the beauty of the handbag because of so many scratches that it had. Call me shallow or whatever it is, but I just didn't find it as appealing as I once did because of the scratches that it had. So I wouldn't end up using it too often. And because I used it so, uh, so much when I was traveling, that was another reason that it got a lot more scratches that way than if I was to use it out and about when I was, um, you know, running errands or shopping or what have you. Uh, so whenever I was running in and out of airports get, or getting into cabs or what or whatever it was, I wasn't very careful with it and it added more and more to the scratches. So it didn't make it a very appealing bag for me to want to use on the daily. So that was a major reason why I ended up selling the Eva Clutch uh, in the Demi Bin. Now, when it comes to the Monogram, I do love the fact that the Monogram one has a smaller plate. It's very, very small. It's about this big. Uh, so it has a lot less hardware to it. However, it has more vaquetta because of the, of the detachable shoulder strap. So whenever I did want to use the monogram one, what, uh, if it was in the summertime or in the springtime, I'd always have to worry about sweat, about the humidity, and it would always end up altering the color of the patina. And I, I, for one, like an, you know, an even patina. I think most of us do. And I felt that because it would wear differently or because of, of the humidity or because of the sweat. I know it sounds nasty, but let's be honest. It happens with the especially if you live somewhere where it's very, very hot. Uh, so, because I feel that the monogram one has too much vaquetta and I feel, and I feel that the Demi Ben one has too much hardware. I really wish there was an in between, uh, with the Demi Ben and, uh, the monogram. And I feel that the Demi Azor is kind of like a double whammy because it has a large inventory plate and it has the vaquetta. Uh, but I really, I really wish there was something different, something that wouldn't scratch too easily. And that way I'd be able to use it a lot more often and be comfortable wearing it without having to think of an eyesore of looking at it because of the scratches that it had. So uh, unfortunately, they, they both had to go. The Sully MM. It is a beautiful handbag and uh, it's very it's very easy to be able to use because it's a hobo. However, I have to say that the slouchiness was driving me insane. That's the first reason why I sold it. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you guys know that I love structured handbags. The Artsy is kind of at that fine line where it is beautiful and I do love it, but the slouch does bug me. Uh, so for, for, if you're someone like me that loves structured handbags, the Sully just wasn't it didn't keep it shape enough. And I felt that whenever I would set it down, it would just kind of, just kind of plop open, uh, or just plop around. Uh, and another reason I sold it was because of the handle. Now, even though the handle was really, really comfortable and you'd be able to set it on your shoulder and it wouldn't move around. Uh, I felt that whenever I wanted to look inside of my handbag, I had to move the handle to one side or another. And because it had the dark, uh, lining interior, that beautiful, uh, brown interior, it would, it would, it would kind of um, play hide and seek with my SLGs, to be honest. It was really hard to be able to find the items because of how dark it was, number one, the design of it, and also because of the handle. So the handle would, I'd always have to move it to one side, to one side or another, and it was driving me crazy. <laughs> so it's something super trivial, and maybe some of you guys are thinking that's not that big of a deal, but it was a huge deal to me, and it always, I always felt that it was, it was not a joy for me to be able to go in inside of my handbag and retrieve any items that I had to, if that makes any sense. And sometimes whenever I open up my handbag, I like to look inside and I just kind of, I smile from ear to ear from seeing all the beautiful eye candy or the SLGs that I have or what have you. And I didn't find that same uh, feeling whenever I would open up my Sully. So it had to go. The Speedy 30 Multicolor Blanc. Uh, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, this is my holy grail. This was my holy grail Louis Vuitton bag. I never thought in a million years it would be part of my collection. And I was very fortunate enough to be able to go to Paris last year and I was able to purchase it. And it was just a dream come true. It was, I was on cloud nine. I was just so, so excited. Uh, however, I think it's one of those type, those types of bags, like a unicorn bag that I, 
I, there was no way I could use it. I, I tried. Trust me, I tried. I would take it out of the ba- of the dust bag and I would kind of look at it and there was no way that I could, I could use it. And I would try my hardest. I forced myself to try to, to, to sport it, to rock it, whatever it is, but I couldn't do it. And I don't have the luxury to be able to just have a handbag with that type of price tag just sitting on my shelf sitting pretty. There is no way. And uh, I thought about it for quite some time. I had it on my shelf for over a year, unused, unused. And it was in, it was in pristine brand new condition and I just couldn't do it. So to me, it makes sense to be able to sell that bag and put that money towards a bag that I know I will use, a bag that I know I will enjoy. And uh, if more power to any of you guys that have the luxury of being able to just buy a handbag and if you don't use it, you don't use it, who cares? And you leave it there, more power to you. That is amazing. Unfortunately, I am not one of those people. So uh, I think there's a few, uh, a few of you who actually say it perfectly on Instagram. It's kind of like a handbag a uh, merry-go-round or a carousel. One comes, one goes away and one comes back. Uh, but it was just, I, you know, it was so beautiful. <laughs> I don't know. Call me crazy. Seriously, call me crazy. But I just could not bring myself to use it. It was driving me insane. And it was just sitting there taunting me saying, use me, use me. <laughs> and I couldn't. So <laughs> it had to go. And have I had any seller's regret on it? I have not. So uh, the beautiful Speedy 30 Multicolor Blanc, that unicorn piece. Um, I'm just happy to say that I was it was part of my collection at one point and I was able to get my Holy Grail Louis Vuitton and that's good enough for me. The Speedy 35 Monogram. This was a bag that really um, kind of opened my eyes to what it is that I absolutely need in my lifestyle. When I first got the 35, the main reason why I got it, uh, well, not only the fact that I wanted a monogram bag, uh, but the main reason was because of the price. I felt that you were getting a bigger bag for a little bit more money than the 30. So I always thought, go big or go home, but that's not always the case. And the 35, even though it is gorgeous, I felt that it was too large. And uh, especially if I was going to use it as a daily bag, I felt that it was just way too big. And uh, even though I am a fan of the the sag that the, that the speedies get, you guys know that, I'm not one to use base shapers, I'm not one to use purse organizers. Not that there's anything wrong with that, however, they are not for me. And uh, I just, I, I, I felt that the sag was a little too prominent in the 35. Uh, not only that, I had been eyeing and I had been contemplating adding a Mon Mono to my collection. And when it comes to either getting a Mon Mono or getting or keeping the 30, 35 regular monogram, the classic uh, Speedy, I felt that if I had both in my collection, I would end up only using one instead of the other because they're both still monogram, even though the Mon Mono does have the coloring on there. It's still a monogram bag and it's still a classic silhouette. So I knew that I would only use one and the other one would just end up sitting on my shelf unused. So the fact that I felt that it was a little too large and the fact that I already knew that I really wanted to get a Mon Mono really weighed in on the fact as to why I wanted to sell it. So that is why I ended up selling my 35. It was a beautiful beautiful bag, great condition. Uh, but I just, uh, it was something that I didn't want to just sit there on my shelf. As I told you guys before with the speedy 30. The Chanel O case in the size medium. Now I know some of you guys are probably looking at me like, okay, why are you adding an SLG into this video? The reason why I'm doing that is because whenever I did use the O case, I would use it as a clutch. So a little mini handbag. Uh, but the main reason why I ended up selling it was because I bought this one. And when I bought this one, I love the fact that it has a lot more compartments in it and it has the little credit card slots as well. So again, kind of like with the uh, Speedy 35 and the Mon Mono Speedy 30, I felt that I would only use one over the other. And uh, another reason why I ended up selling it was because when I did use it as a clutch, I felt that because of the, <clears throat> excuse me, because of the design and because of its, its size, if I put too many items in there, they'd kind of end up laying on top of each other. So let's say I wanted to reach in and get my clay. It would be at the very bottom. And, um, I'd kind of had to dig throughout 
throughout everything if I wanted to just retrieve one item very quickly. So it's not, it's not that it was too fussy, but I felt that everything would just kind of just boop, 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 lay on top of each other. And it just drove me a little, a little crazy. Uh, and I feel that the same thing happens with, uh, most of the O cases, if you get the larger one or the medium. So to me, it just didn't end up working out. And plus, since I had already, uh, gotten this one, this is one that I ended up using quite, um, I mean, a lot more often than the other one. And again, because of of the compartments. I felt that it was a little bit more user friendly to use this one versus the other one. And for me to use it as a toiletry or as something else, uh, I just felt that it was a little too expensive to just have it sit there as well and um, go unused. Or if I was to use it as a toiletry, as I mentioned earlier, I felt that it wasn't large enough. I felt that because it was still a little bit more narrow, the top part of the zipper would end up kind of getting those little waves and those little indentations that I didn't want to end up seeing. So it would either have to have flat items inside or uh, not too many items to the point where it makes it really bulky and really uh, uncomfortable and awkward to be able to use. The Speedy 35 in Damia Ben. I love the bag and I specifically used it the most during the fall and winter months because even though it doesn't rain too often here in Southern California, uh, I still wanted to make sure that it could be a carefree bag. I didn't have to worry about patina or anything like that. And what I loved about it the most was that when I would use it, I'd be able to put my umbrella, my gloves, my scarves. There, there was so much that I could fit in the bag, but I still felt again that the size 35 was too large for daily for daily wear and uh, even though I have not yet replaced it with the size 30 that is the way that I'm going I feel that the 30 just suits uh, my body frame a little bit better I feel that it's a little bit uh, friendlier if you will for daily use uh, not that I'm trying to take away from the size 35 again because you can fit so much in there but it got to the point where it was too heavy for me to carry in the crook of my arm and uh, I just felt again since I already had the 30 in a mon mono and I have the 30 in the the Dami Azor. I really like the silhouette and I like the size and you can still fit uh, a substantial amount of uh, items in there that I felt that I should just replace it with a 30. So I have not done that yet. Uh, I am still waiting for the right moment to add the 30 back into my, or the, the Demi Ben uh, Speedy back into my collection. But that is the main reason as to why it is that I sold the 35 in Demi Ben. The Alma PM in Monogram Vernie in the color Cerise and Noir Magnetic. Both of those bags are beautiful. You can't go wrong with black, especially with the black hardware. And the Cerise, well, you guys know my fascination with red and gold hardware. Um, so when it comes to both of those bags, I thought they were fantastic, but I did not use them enough. And I think what it comes down to is monogram vernis in general. Now, monogram vernis isn't as delicate as some people say it is. And I am, I for one am one of those people. In the beginning, I thought it was way too delicate. However, it is very, very durable to a certain extent. There's still a few things that you have to take into consideration whenever you do have a monogram uh, item. Maybe more so to be I mean, you have to be a little bit more careful with a bag than an SLG because an SLG is kind of protected in your handbag, but the handbag itself, um, there's a few things that you have to, you have to kind of factor in. Number one is color transfer. And even though it wouldn't show up with the black, uh, with the red, I knew that since I do tend to wear jeans quite often, uh, especially in the, in the winter and in the, or in the winter and in the fall, I would end up getting color transfer. So because I didn't have a shoulder strap on it and because I would carry it on the crook of my arm and if I carried it low, I knew that I would end up rubbing on my jeans. So it was something that I always had in the back of my mind. I always thought color transfer, color transfer, because even though it isn't the lightest color out there, it's also not the darkest color. So I had to worry about getting any type of transfer on it. It was just too much of a fuss for me to use it. And even though it was gorgeous and even though sometimes I try to put it in the back of my mind, okay, it's, it's not a big deal. Just use it and enjoy it. I still couldn't enjoy it because I had those things just constantly coming up. Okay. Color transfer, color transfer. It was like, it was, you know, screaming at me. So, um, I wouldn't use it too often because of that. And whenever I did, I felt like I just kind of, I felt like it was a dirty diaper, you know, like I had to hold it at a distance and not be able to, to really carry the bag that you would, the way that you would carry it on the crook of your arm, if that makes any sense, you know? So I looked awkward whenever I would carry it. And when it comes to the Noir Magnetic, 
The main reason why I, I um, ended up selling it was because of the hardware. A lot of people were saying that the hardware would chip over time, and I felt that if I ended up using it more and more, that the hardware would end up chipping, and then I would either have to get it replaced or it was something that I wouldn't want to see. Kind of like what happened with the uh, Eva clutch. I felt that it was... I felt that I didn't want to deal with an eyesore. I didn't want to deal with the chipping because once I see that, then I wouldn't want to use it. And then it would go on the shelf and it would go unused. And you guys know, as I told you guys earlier, I'm not one to just have something just sitting there. So I ended up selling them. Now, when it comes to selling the Almas, I'm going to tell you guys, I lost a thousand dollars on each one. I barely used them and I lost a thousand dollars. That is a lot of money. So I pretty much sold each handbag for half of what they are, uh, what they are selling for now, not including tax, because when it comes to selling handbags, you can't think of tax because some people have a higher tax rate. Some people don't have any, uh, taxes that they pay in their state. So uh, tax can't really be a factor in when it comes, uh, when it comes to selling a handbag, but I lost a thousand dollars, uh, on each handbag and it was, it, it was, it was hard. I'm not going to lie. It was such a hard thing to, to do because I knew that I didn't want to just let it sit there. And I knew that at least I would get some money so I could put it towards another handbag or another goodie that I would use. And, um, whenever I, I feel that whenever it comes to holler to colored handbags, that's where it really weighs in on the resale value because not everyone is going to be crazy about a red handbag. Not everyone is going to want a purple handbag or a blue handbag. So now I feel that even though I want to add colors to my collection, I feel that if I, if I do spend this amount of money on a handbag and you can either enjoy the handbag and use it for the color that it is or the way that it is, that's fine. But if you want to resell them, then I think that the resale value has plays a major role in that, if that makes any sense. So, um, you know, I think that if I was to add color, it's only going to be on SLGs now because of the experience that I had with the Alma Verni. And I thought that the, even the black one would sell, uh, better, but it didn't because of the same thing with the hardware that it en might end up chipping and losing its luster. So that was a major, major factor on it. And, uh, it was, as I told you guys earlier, it was hard. <laughs> it was hard because I, I was just like blown away. I was shocked by how much money I lost. So it, color is a huge thing on resale value. And again, not everyone is going to be crazy about the color that you love. You, you have to find the right buyer for that item. So um, I did end up selling both and they went to fabulous, fabulous ladies and they are both enjoying them. Uh, but it was just something that I parted with and uh, I'm, I'm happy that that money was able to go towards uh, other handbags. The Pouchette Accessoire NM in Dami Azur, Dami Ben, and Monogram Prints. I had all three of them and I loved them all. And the only reason why I sold them is because at the time, I think I had nine or ten small handbags because I had already started to add the Chanel wallet on chains. And um, I just didn't want to have too many small handbags. I wanted to be able to have uh, maybe some larger handbags, some medium-sized handbags. Uh, but when I looked at my collection as a whole, most of it, if not, um, you know, almost half of the collection was all small handbags. So I just wanted to put that money towards, uh, getting just a larger handbag. That's all it was. But I love, I love the push accessoire. I talk about them often and I think that they are either a great starter bag to start out in the Louis Vuitton, uh, fashion house, or just a great bag to add to any collection at any point in time. And I have even thought about adding, uh, another one, <laughs> actually buying another one and putting it in my collection since, uh, now I sold, uh, um, most of the smaller handbags that I had, and I just really like how carefree the Pusha accessoire is. So really, there's no uh, there's no other reason than the fact that I had too many small handbags at the time. So the Galliera PM in Damia Azor, I love that bag, beautiful hobo, uh, and uh, it was just one of those bags that I didn't end up using. It sat there for a very long time. I think I ended up using it twice, uh, within a year. And whenever I think about selling an item, that's just, that's just something that I look at. How often did I use it in that year or those six months or what have you? And if I didn't use it, then it's something that ends up, uh, having to go. 
Alma PM in Multicolor Noir. I love the bag, beautiful bag. I got it at a great price. However, because of the wear that it had on the Vaquetta, uh, I knew that I wasn't going to replace it and I knew I didn't want to clean it. But again, I think it's one of those things that had too much wear for me to be able to enjoy it. And again, I don't want to sound like I'm snooty and I only want to have, you know, these bags in the best condition ever. But when it comes to the joy of being able to use a handbag and when I saw the wear that I had, I just couldn't get over it. I did use it, but whenever I did, I'd, I'd quickly change into another handbag that didn't have as much wear. Uh, so maybe if I was one to, uh, to have kept it so that I can uh, replace the leather, that, that would have been great. But I didn't want to put more money into the handbag. And even though I got it for a great price, I still didn't want to put more and more money into, uh, into that bag. So it was just something that ended up having to uh, leave my collection. So that does it for the handbags that I have sold. I think that's it. I Hopefully I'm not forgetting any. Uh, but uh, like I told you guys in the beginning, it's all a matter of personal preference. And what might work out for Sally, what might work out for Bobby, might not work out for you. And that's okay because, uh, you know, I'd rather put that money towards a handbag that I will end up enjoying, like I told you guys earlier. And it's not that I'm trying to take away from each handbag. It's not that I don't appreciate each brand for what they are or for what they offer, but it just didn't end up suiting my lifestyle. And also, do I have any seller's regrets on any of these items? I don't. Uh, because again, those, those handbags that I sold were able to, I was able to put money towards the handbags that you see behind me. And that to me is better because I feel that even though I have sold quite a bit of my, uh, especially my Louis Vuitton collection, because that's mostly what this video was about. Um, I, I now, I feel, I really like my collection. I use all of the, the handbags that I have in more of a rotation. Whereas before, sometimes I would go months or a year, year and a half without using a handbag. And I don't have that luxury to just let them sit there. Um, and I always put, whenever I think about selling an item, once it's kind of in my in my head that okay I might sell it I might end up getting rid of it it's kind of it's kind of like it's almost concrete that it's going to happen if that makes any sense so if I start saying okay I'm going to end up selling this purse I start thinking about it and it's almost like I start detaching from it so that way when I do sell it I don't have that seller's regret uh so I don't know if that will help out uh any of you guys with um you know, if you guys are thinking about selling any of your items, but I really hope this video was able to help. And, uh, if you are thinking about selling them, hopefully I, I was able to, uh, shed some light on some of the things that I went through and some of the things that I thought about when I was uh, getting rid of some of these bags, but they are beautiful. And I'm so happy that they all went to, to fabulous homes and the people that have purchased them are enjoying them. But, uh, yeah, so I hope this video helped and thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys possibly tomorrow if not uh, this weekend, uh, I will try to upload my vlog then. But thank you so much for watching. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.